Hi, welcome to another pregnancy update. Oh my gosh, they're flying by. I said I wouldn't stay in this video about how quickly it's going, so I'm gonna stop talking about how quickly it's going. But side note, it's going so quickly. So this is the 36 week update, final few weeks to go. Jet was pretty much on time, so I've kind of got that in my mind that probably is just the four weeks left to go. Like I don't think I'd, I'll go over by much, but I mean, we'll see. So what's been going on? Um, Braxton Hicks have started, which actually I don't think I got with Jet. I don't remember getting them, which makes me feel like I didn't get them because I think I'd remember. They're weird. It basically feels like very, very minor contractions. It feels like the contractions you get kind of at the beginning of labor where my bump just really, really tightens and then releases again. And it's just weird. It's funny when you're in your second pregnancy, but then you're still experiencing new things. I think you just assume, well, or I assumed anyway, that you kind of know what's coming, you know what you're gonna experience, you've done it all before. Even though it's your body, it's still, goes through different things, has different symptoms and whatever. So yeah, that's weird, but it's fine. It just feels like a kind of slight contraction then goes again. I find, I feel like you're very close to me. I'm just gonna, yeah. I feel like we're a bit, we're a bit too intimate then for a second. It is there, it bothers me more when I'm out. So if I'm walking, I find when it tightens, I, I can't really, walk and have it. I kind of need to just pause and let it pass and then carry on because it just, I mean, I can carry on walking, but it's just it's a lot more uncomfortable if, if I do that. And then also generally with walking, I'm finding I'm definitely at that pregnant stage where I'm just walking so much slower. I've definitely got a bit of a waddle. I keep having to ask people to slow down. My back's getting really sore. I'm really tall. And so I've never had a great back anyway, because I think I always stand in my hip and I slouch and I, I just don't have great posture from being tall. And so then pregnancy, I think, has just brought that out even more. I guess because you're, it makes me realise how much I rely on my abs. <laughs> Not that I've got like great abs. Being pregnant and with your bump, with your abs separating, I could be totally wrong, but I feel like that's then weakened my stomach. So then more pressure is on my back and my back can't really live up to the job. So my back's getting quite sore. I'm having a lot of baths. Most evenings now, I collapse into the bath with few like little drops of lavender and I've got a really nice well I talked about it in my January favourites if you want to see but I've got a really nice bath mixture from Temple Spa that I've been using as well which has been really kind of calming what else I feel like I've got acid reflux or something of that I've just decided that's what it's called but that kind of thing where I feel like here in my to like top of my chest I just get acid but it just, it just feels like I've got like a fire burning in my chest. Again, didn't have that with Jet, but I have it this time around. Most evenings I get it. Not awfully, and I have, I've been really slack at sorting it out. So I know a lot of people have said to use Gaviscon, but I haven't. <laughs> um, Henry gets annoyed at me because I act like a martyr. Like, oh no, I won't take those pills. I won't do that. But it's not for any particular reason other than just, just don't get round to it. <laughs> it's so silly. I find a glass of milk really helps. And then I just keep drinking water. It's like hoping it will like kind of push it down. And I guess that's good in itself because it just means it's encouraging me to stay a bit more hydrated. And then I'm still really getting a lot of the kind of heart palpitations, faint feelings. And actually at my 35 week appointment, my iron levels came back as being quite low. I think it's partly to do with that. It is also just generally a pregnancy symptom. Like I talked in my last video about how you've got some, sorry. My blue in card got full. The heart palpitation side is is really weird. Makes me just feel it's kind of like after you've done a really full on workout and you know and your arms just feel really shaky and tired and weak. I feel like they go like that, and then my heart I can just really feel it in my chest. I have to kind of take quite controlled breaths and preferably just sit down for a few minutes and just kind of recompose myself. So that's weird. I'm hoping that iron is gonna help. Oh yeah, sorry, was that what is that what I was saying? I was prescribed these iron tablets, but I didn't like the sound of them. And after I had jet for those first few weeks, I took Spartone. And so I've just started taking that. So hopefully that's gonna help with my iron levels. And then maybe that will help the heart things subside slightly. But yeah, I got on really well with Spartone after having jet, because I think 
you lose so much blood after birth not even to do with anything that is really dramatic just obviously it's kind of like your period like your womb empties of everything that it's had in there obviously the placenta coming out of the placenta is just like a sack of blood <laughs> and obviously you've had all the extra blood pumping through you for the baby just everything coming out and emptying means you lose a lot and so i think obviously yeah then your iron levels can go really low so i found spartone really helpful so i'm taking that again hoping that helps what else i've got my notes oh yeah I, I feel like i'm getting slight spd but nowhere near the amount i had with jet so spd is i always tell myself that i'll research it before i film a video so that i can actually talk about it properly but then i always forget but it basically is i think your pelvis kind of like separates or uh something a bit prematurely pretty above i can't remember but basically it makes it just really really sensitive and sore and the main side effect i found with jet is that it just meant anything i did where i was shifting my weight was just really painful and i had it quite badly with, not badly with jet i had it I never feel like I can say I had something badly because then there's other people who end up in, like, in a wheelchair with it because they just totally can't move. So I didn't have it that badly, but it really affected me. I think as well you forget how many times you need to be shifting your weight. So obviously just for walking, but then also getting dressed. You know, you're putting your socks on. You've got to stand on one leg. I couldn't, I couldn't stand on one leg. Even turning over in bed, you realise you kind of use one leg to turn. So... It just affected a lot and it's not this it's not as much this time around but still just generally walking i just need to take that a bit slower because it starts getting sore after like a longer period of time but it's not awful but it definitely is coming back a little bit i'm hoping over the next four weeks it just stays as it is and doesn't get kind of progressively worse annoyingly there's nothing you can do about it and then what's so weird is then as soon as the baby's born it just disappears it just goes it's not like you need kind of a physio or anything to get over it, it just the pelvis just goes back so then hit no birthing obviously if you've watched any of my videos you'll know i'm obsessed if you haven't watched them i'll link them below i've got video on my birth with jet which was a really positive hypno birthing experience and um, then i've got a whole other video just on hypno birthing i read the Catherine graves hypno birthing book and love it so i started reading that again which is just really nice kind of re-reminding me about the mentality of labour and preparing myself for that. I'm trying to read it each evening before I go to bed. It's just a really nice way to end your day. Thinking about birth in a really positive way, preparing yourself. She talks about how birth is like a marathon. You'd never run a marathon without training. And I just love that mentality. That's always what I try and remind myself about. And baby names. We have got our baby names, which is exciting. So last weekend we drove like right up north and back again. So we did like 10, 12 hours in the car over the weekend. And so we used that as the chance to like nail down our baby names. So we, we've got the same now that we had with Jet where we've got two, three girls names, two, three boys names, and then like a little mix of middle names. And when they're born, we'll decide the actual final name. So we haven't picked the actual name, but we've got the kind of the ones we're gonna go for, which is really exciting and makes it feel really real and like it's happening and it's actually really helped me mentally prepare because I feel like okay now I can actually picture these these names and like who this child might actually be rather than it just being a pregnancy the kicks as well are crazy again I talked about in a previous video about the kind of like journey of the kicks and how they start off as just these tiny little butterfly popcorn type feelings and now I'm fully in that the whale stage that I like to call it you can see the shape of it kind of jab out of my stomach and then it like moves and turns across my whole stomach and it's not super comfortable, I'm not gonna lie. Now that it's big, it is real jabs. It's like a real fist kind of like rubbing along your stomach and it's up in my rib the whole time, which I'm hoping means it's heads down and it's legs are up in my ribs, but who knows, I don't know. I feel like rather than it just being general kicks, you now can actually feel the specific limbs that are kicking you. And so it's really starting to feel like that is an actual baby, <laughs> which I know. Is obvious but when it's just general kicks you're just like oh my pregnant bump and little kicks and then you're like oh no that's a baby inside me that is kicking me with its feet and its arms weird and it keeps getting hiccups which is really sweet you can tell it's hiccups because it's really rhythmic and it, it like kicks kicks what else i had a little bit of a a scare a few weeks ago it wasn't a scare but i scared myself and i'm normally i'm very chilled and relaxed and i don't panic about these kind of things and i'm good at kind of keeping any kind of negative thoughts from my mind someone's walking past and they're just like looking in my window 
watching me film myself, they probably think I'm a right weirdo. Over the space of like a day, I felt like the baby's moves were just really sporadic and weird. And then I felt like it went still for a while. And I just started getting myself really panicked that something was wrong. And I had an interesting experience. So it's good to always have the number for triage kind of on you, ready to go. Because I had it in my notes somewhere, but I had to kind of rifle through to try and find it. And that's the number that you can call on the maternity ward that are there for you. 24 7 any questions you have and I couldn't find the number and so I also just phoned my local children's center Which is where my midwife appointments are and I'd been oh, that's what had worried me as well Because I was really behind my midwife appointment I'd had a 24-hour bug and so couldn't go to my midwife appointment and then they didn't have any availability for another like month so What should have been a 28 week checkup ended up being about a 33 week checkup um, so I just was nervous that no one had listened to the heartbeat in that time. I hadn't, I hadn't seen a professional in that time. So I phoned the children's centre and just said to the guy in reception, like, oh, I'm a bit worried about my baby, baby's movements and I'm really behind on my middle appointments. Is there any chance I could book in a kind of emergency appointment? And he just was like, no, if you've got a problem, phone triage. And then just put the phone down. <laughs> so that wasn't the greatest experience. I think it's just hard when you hope that those kind of services are offering real care for women and the reality is they're also just busy businesses but triage are definitely always there on the phone if you need them so if you do ever have any worries and the best advice i got was that it's six hour chunks so if you don't feel the baby move at all for six hours that's when it is maybe a good time to phone someone again not to panic there's a lot of reasons why especially at this kind of stage in pregnancy they do go through like sleeping and awake cycles but six hours is the general kind of to have in the back of your mind and then also within those six hours maybe after two three four hours if you haven't felt it move have a big glass of ice cold water and then lie down on your left side and see if that kind of wakes up and makes it move around and again if it doesn't then that the six hours is kind of like the, the time frame to have in your mind before you need to um maybe take a bit of action. But again, not to panic, which I just found really helpful because again with Jet, I was a lot more aware of it. Whereas this baby, I'm running around after Jet, the baby could be kicking and I don't really notice because I'm busy doing a food shop in a rush or whatever. So I mainly feel the baby in the morning and the evening when I sit down or lie down, I'm nice and still and can feel it. But just having that six hour thing has helped me just to try and be a bit more aware of like mid morning and mid afternoon, just clocking like, oh, have I felt anything? And often if I'm sat in the car and me and Jet are driving somewhere, I then feel like just a few little kicks and you just know that it's doing well. That's pretty much everything. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Lots of love. Peace out.